Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Do you have one of these Blink camera systems? I do, but every now and then I do get glitches with the camera system because of this. And you might see, okay, it says it's gone offline here, but I actually took a picture before it went offline to show you. Um, what happens is every now and then it basically uh, loses uh, sync. Um, and goes a bit do lally and there's a picture of it. Luckily I took that off because obviously that would be offline and you can see you get one bar and it drives me absolutely kabonkers and um, what I got was this. I actually forgot I ordered it to be honest with you. It's a Wi-Fi antenna and the idea was I wanted to improve the Wi-Fi reception of this because it basically lives next to the Wi-Fi router. It's like you're really close to it. You should have a good signal and yet it doesn't. So I thought, well, let's see. I mean, it might not be Wi-Fi upgradable once we get under the hood, but I don't know. I think there's a good chance we can fit something in. I'm looking now, you know, hunting, hunting. I need to hunt for a suitable splagination device, and that's a bit sharp. Um, I do need to speak to iFixit. I kind of need to get hold of some tools, some Tulios. Can you anybody recommend a good a good kit? I could, should get a good kit. Magnet. So I'm going to go into the sharp stuff, I think. Um, it's definitely some. Oh, there we go. Phew. I didn't want to maul it too much. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Loads of room in there for uh, stuff. That's nice and hollow. What is that? Oh, that's the LED block. So let's actually have a proper little look at this while we're, we're here. And who has been taking my tools again? Tell you what, I'm gonna to have to start putting um, like RFID on the back office. So if somebody takes a tool out, it just goes. Wah, 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 wah. Is that your robot, son? It's crap. Looks like there's a um, programming header in here too. All sorts of stuff could be available in this thing. I've lost a screw though. Oh, there it is. Nice one. So let's examine this while we've got it out. So there's, um, I don't know what the USB is for. We don't really use that. We do use the USB button a lot. It's a Zentel A3R13, something with a blob over it. Micro USB for power. So that'd be the micro USB circuitry in there. Look at that. There's a bunch of stuff there that's not populated. Plus it says here, an iMedia, I-M-M-E-D-I-R, semi. ISI, can you read it there? Well, ISI 1502 SAEU Sync Rev A. Mm, that looks suspiciously there like an Ethernet port, doesn't it? And that's probably an Ethernet Phi footprint. So, yeah, there's a jumper 3 which suspiciously looks like a programming jumper for getting the firmware on there. And then there's some sort of chip under there that's carrying it over. So, let's have a little look see and see if we can spot this thing. I think has two antennas in it. A Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth and ah, this thing here, I think is probably a Wi-Fi. Um, although it does look like here there is a board antenna of some description. So I would probably be prepared to say that that's a Wi-Fi antenna. Let's, let's see what. Let's measure it. If it's normally like two point something centimeters yeah look two point one two two point four centimeters that's like 2.4 gigahertz isn't it that's what i'm going for uh, i don't really know the maths to be honest with you i just know that i used to have a calculator um software when i was in uh, loughborough university and it would tell you how long to make an antenna for a given frequency so uh i remember making a uh, Wi-Fi antennas and they always had a bit that was cut off about that long which is about that long. So let's go with that. Put on the soldering iron. Let's get our little antennae. So I bought this off eBay. I believe it was probably about a pound or two. I mean it wasn't anything it's crazy expensive. I'm going to try. I think it'd be nice to put the um, the Wi-Fi thing right in the top here so we could do that. And let's take out the little fittings. Little fittings. And I happened, I just noticed by my foot that I've got my drill here. I don't know what we were using, something white we were cutting it. I think, was that not the uh, joystick thing we were making? And if I'm not mistaken, there we go, a five or a six will fit that perfectly. So we'll keep that handy. 
So let's pop that back in. We need to make sure that we've got the right clearances though before we drill any holes. And a pokey pokey. Okie dokie, pig in the pokey! Get in there, you, you cheeky monkey. How can it be so difficult just to get it to sit in its little awl? Um, so these are quite good when they want to play ball, but when they don't, they don't. The cameras talk directly, I think, to your Wi-Fi router, whatever router you set this to. Oh, that's going to fit really nicely, actually. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to put a hole. I'm just going to go for it, guys. No measuring. Remember, measuring's for chumps. I mean, isn't that measuring? I mean, eyeballing it up, that's the same as measuring, isn't it? In effect, I'm just using my, um, my engineer's intuition. This is kind of scary. One slip and it's through your, through your palm. Almost. Those drill bits are so useful. There we go. So we've got a hole in the case. Gonna now just clear off some of those internal fins. And I know it's black on black on black, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can try to see them a bit there. There is some internal finnage, and I'm using a very blunt uh, scalpel, which I'm kind of not too bothered about breaking because it's so blunt, I gotta replace it. But, oh yeah, I found, by the way, my scalpel blades, the ones that I'd lost for a year. I found... Oh, there you go, blade's gone. Luckily it's on the floor somewhere, so when I walk around barefoot, I'm likely to trod on it. Let's go for something else. It's like pairing. Thinking, thinking. I started watching bloody chess, of all things, on YouTube. I'm now addicted to bloody chess. Thank you very much. I did used to play chess, but at an extreme amateur level, right? I don't know, we've all played chess at an extreme amateur level, haven't we? I think that's the level most of us settle on, the way you kind of learn the moves, um, the basic moves that each player can make, and then just leave it at that, which is fine enough. Um, so now, when I watch them playing, I, I, can, I do get it. I get what they're doing. So it's enough to sort of pique my interest, because I can tell. And uh, after about, I don't know, 20 videos or something, I think it was called Coffee Chess, look it up. Um, I actually started now playing along, like, oh, look, he's his rook is covering the queen and then now he has to move over there to do whatever, and he's going over there, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, no! Right, let's have a little look on here, see how they've done this. Look at this thing here, though, they've actually got, Hmm. This looks suspiciously like an antenna port, doesn't it? Where you've got like a ground, and that is connected to ground, and then a centre wire. But I don't think that's connected. I mean, I'm looking at the... I think we might be able to buzz it out. We might have to move a cap, though, if you want to actually use the, the one that they've got on board. Yeah, it's not connected to there. It's like if you move this resistor from here to here, it'll work. That's probably a zero R resistor. Um, but there's little point in doing that because I don't actually have the receptacle for that. So I'm just going to have to cut that. So what I'm going to do is unsolder. You see those three pads there? I'm going to use that to unsolder the existing thing. Clean the old solder. Ah, it's going to clean the old soldering iron, but uh, too much stuff in my way. Let's get it nice and hot. Let's get a bit of flux on board. Ooh, my little blob of solder. It's stuck on there. So how do you desolder one of those things. So it's basically a bent bit of metal. 
it might not want to go. We might have to just cut it. No, it, it kind of pushed through a bit. Check it. Let me check it. Uh, hmm. You know what? After studying this, I don't think I'm going to keep that. Let's just chop it out. It's not necessary. Oh my god! Did I just break? Oh, it's a light guide. Phew. Thought I broke off our uh, LED there. That would have been uh, slightly annoying. No, not en not the end of the world, but slightly annoying. Actually, look. Let's just leave it at that. I reckon I can solder onto those. And I study this light guide thing again. Okay, we're all right. That's going to be everything is okay. Right, let's get back into this. So what we're going to do is um, make sure we can fit this. So before we do anything, let's tin, tin the contact. So you've got the big piece. That's going to be pretty much the ground plane. So tin your ground plane. And then you've got your little dot, and that's going to be your center of your coax. So we're going to have to cut this wire now. Let's take this back out. You can see everything. And I saw everything. It was too late. I saw everything. Name that what that's from. And win a banana. Mm -hmm. So I stripped that and it's looking all kind of crazy. Way more care. Unless we want to ruin this whole thing. Way more care needed. Now my strippers are slightly embuggered. And the reason being, I can't remember what it was, it was in an earlier video, you could probably, if you've been watching, you'll be able to tell me. Um, I cut something with it that I shouldn't have and it's now got loads of um, basically little bite marks in the uh, blade. And those little bite marks form tiny little knives. Um, and rather than like pinch the wire, they just cut into it now. So it makes it very hard to use it as a stripper. So what I'm doing is I'm separating the ground wire from the uh, center core of the coax. You can see it there on my finger. And I'm just going to spin that, spin that, spin that. Now, there's probably no harm in leaving. You don't want to leave it too long. Um, looking at the board, you know, you see when I'm going to solder it there and there. I, and what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to tin you know me, I'm not too bothered about how pretty it looks as long as it's functional and those things. Um, let's just tin it first. Because what we might find, I'll show, you, I'll show you what I've got in mind. What we might find is if we clean this up, we might be able to just solder that right in. Come on. It's got like a pendulum on the end, it's like heavy. It's like sliding around like Game of Thrust. Come on now. Oh, this is painful. <sighs> Tweezers. Fiddly, way more fiddly than it ought to be. Let's just get that there. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then we kind of want that on there. So what I'm wondering is, I'm gonna do a little test. If I just... Ho! Oh, you can see I've got like a bit of the core here. I'm kind of gonna just solder it like that. Fanta, Fanta, my friend, Fanta. Who's got a drink as a friend? That was the song, right? Fanta, Fanta, my friend, Fanta. Drinks are friends! Right, soldering iron off. I think we're done with the soldering iron. So I wonder what would happen if you fit an Ethernet Phi on there, if this would all of a sudden start chatting, chitting, chatting. Because I, I don't know, if you wrote the firmware for this, would you uh, bother unwriting the uh, Ethernet stack from it? 
in your production models. So you could just keep the same debug model and production model. Come on now. There was a bit of cajoling, but it's in. We knew the cajoling would be there. And then, and then we're just gonna make a loop. Loop de loop. Boom! That's looking quite sweet, isn't it? So you gotta decide on your washer strategy. Um ooh, hang on a minute, look at this. That's kind of groovy, isn't it? That's like a core. Let's that's going to be tight. So we're going to put a spring washer on the back and a serrated on the front. There we go. I mean, it's not going to need much force, this thing. Serrated on. I don't really know which way the serrated should go, really. I kind of think it goes nut side, the serrations, but I'm going to look into that one day. Never paid attention on it. Never really had one undo. <laughs> And then have a look a little look around. Look on your shelves for some sort of pliers. Ah, cool. I've got the most inappropriate thing, which is my mini vice grips, but that'll do. And crank that bad boy till the pips squeak. Squeak! Like that. Hmm. That's all right. Now let's get our little light guides back in so we can see our LEDs. LED. So here's the perfect opportunity for you to change the LEDs into green and red ones instead of blue. There we go. Remember when everything went to blue LED all of a sudden? Now I could put a blob of glue on that. I kind of suspect it's just going to stay put because the uh, there's a hole in the case for those. Let's get the last screws in. The only screws, actually. It'd be nice if this worked. I never understand though why the why the unit if they can see the base unit, which I guess is Bluetooth low energy. It also has Wi-Fi, but it doesn't have enough bandwidth of the Wi-Fi for your. Your gadgets they have to talk to uh, your main Wi-Fi I'm just going to rub uh, a screwdriver on here just to kind of smooth out you know like when you when you pry something off it bends the plastic and makes a kind of nasty looking thing sometimes if you just get in there and add loads of extra other scratches just push them down make them look a bit prettier right let's get that blinky thing in does have some sort of features behind that. Right, I think that's okay. That's looking all right, isn't it? It's not too bad. We'll pop our antenna on there. Ooh. And there we go. Look at that. And if it's on the wall mount, it could just point straight up either. Nice. Let's test it. Okay. I've got my USB. Plugging it back in. And it will be interesting to see what we get here because... Uh, where I am now in the back office is not quite where this is normally placed. It's like this is quite far away from the router and at least two walls between here and there. So once it registers on my um, Wi-Fi, we'll have a look on the Blink app and we'll see what that signal is because obviously at the moment it says it's offline. <laughs> so that's finally come on here, but the Wi-Fi is poor, but I kind of felt it would be. And when I went through the cameras, the cameras themselves are having trouble talking to this. So I'm going to move this back to its central location in the property, but I'll keep the phone here and we'll review it away from here. Come on. Hooray! So it's still pretty poo. It says it's fair. Um, if I find where it was before, at least it was poor before. And now it's fair. But, you know, it's an improvement. We've gone from one bar to two bars. But I don't know why is it so kind of crappy in measuring what it's getting, considering it's like amazingly near. If I look at some of the cameras, I can uh, update their status. So it says here, camera to Wi-Fi one bar, camera to sync module three bars. Let's update that. 
And what this will do, it will pull the camera and get the camera to give its own uh, you know, measure of these things. So you can go through and then just see what at least the camera to sync module should not have changed, I suppose, if it's BLE, but if it is, happens to be kind of Wi-Fi-ish, I don't know. Let's just have a look, see what it says. Um, probably worth doing anyway, right? I don't see how that can you know, do it any harm, and at least you can orientate the antenna, move it around a bit, so at least it is matching your um, your base station, because, uh, oh, command failed to complete. Yep, okay. So that's the kind of standard blinky blinky things I get, but okay. Some sort of improvement, I guess. As ever, thanks for watching. The Back Office Show is funded in part by Patreon, and I'd like to thank these lovely people. I fix it. Tim Nichols, Gary Pinkett, Rob Taylor, The Dutch Retro Gamer, Chrissy, Robert Rowland, Jonathan Smith, Tech Moan, Andrew Dalton, Lorne Smith, Dan Stott, Andrew Beer, Martin with Haven, Big Whale, Eagle Staland, Kevin Lee, Retro Man Cave, Verdi RD, Chinny Hill, Hannah Cass, Nostalgia Nerd, Vaughn Eckert, Erwin Beerhoff, Michael Turner Craig, Bruce Major, Zed, Gregory Burslam, Pamela M. Toynton, Adrian King, Dean, The Game Whisperer, Wayne Sloman, Derek Nags, Robert Diggle, and David Barr. Thank you, everybody. Bye.